Thank you, Susan. It's such a privilege to be here as part of the NOVA conference and flourishing futures. And thank you, Rick, for settling our souls. Finding beauty in a broken world is creating beauty in the world we find. Mosaics are created by hand. Louis Gakumba, Rwandan, took my hand, and he is now our son. From Rwanda, he wrote, quote, everywhere you walk in the streets of Africa, you find many different kinds of glass from broken bottles, good colors to see through. Believe me, nice things can be made from these bottles. Cups can be made from them, dishes too. What is broken can produce something new and important for the community. Street kids, he goes on to say, are not considered on the same level as others more fortunate. Sure, they're disappointed by life. On the other hand, people always talk that this generation is the one future leaders will be found. For some, yes, for others, no. Those in the streets have no hope, no education. They are responsible for themselves. They do not think about what is going to happen. They only think about daily bread, but they have minds, they think and act. They have dreams. They are dying to be transformed. We are all dying to be transformed. Shards of glass, I will share with you, can cut and wound or magnify a vision. Mosaic celebrates brokenness and the beauty of being brought together. Our survival, the vitality of the planet, depends on mental flexibility and emotional acuity. Hands raised, hands put to work. We can improvise, we can create without a map, and we don't have to live in isolation. The gift of an attentive life is the ability to recognize patterns and find our way toward a unity built on empathy. Those of us who are in kinship with the earth, all of us know these things. How have we forgotten? Empathy becomes the path that leads us from the margins to the center of concerns. The pattern is the thing. The beauty made belongs to everyone. We all bow. Finding beauty in a broken world becomes more than the art of assembly. It is the work of daring contemplation that inspires action. Mosaic is a conversation with that which has been broken. Who will give up this world? The catalog of forms is endless. No one sees everything. I am looking for a way to vocalize, perform, act out, address the commonly felt crisis of our time. These are spiritual exercises. I went back for the disembodied arms with the hands clasped in prayer, but they were gone. Fragmentation and breaking up is indeed the essence of the 20th century. We are now living in the 21st century. We have no compass to reorient ourselves. Memory is redundant. Didn't we plant the seeds? Weren't we necessary to the earth? There is an old saying that when you change your life, you also change your ideas. I used to believe that truth was found only below the surface of things, underground. I was a disciple of death. What was hidden was what I desired. But something changed. It's the dismemberment of a territory. I'm interested now in what my eyes can see, what my fingers can touch, what my hand can know by moving slowly across flesh or fur or feathers or stone. I trust what I see. The surface of things is what we see. I trust what I touch. The surface of things is what we touch. What I am touching now is parched land, fire, ash. In the place that I call home, the Red Rock Desert of Southern Utah in the American Southwest. We are in drought, a drought not seen for close to 2,500 years. There are parts along the Colorado River where you can walk across that mighty river. Great Salt Lake is retreating 
to its historic low, leaving us with a horizon of salt. Each morning when the sun rises in the Red Rock Desert I call home, illuminating Adobe Mesa, I see a fresh day before me and the setting sun sinks behind Porcupine Rim, creating an encore light on Castleton Tower that is akin to grace. I'm alive with gratitude. What happens in between dawn and dusk is something deeper than hope. For me, it has everything to do with how we choose to engage in a world on fire. Meeting fire with fire is a strategy. May we find our fire, what we are passionate about, and create a backburn to meet the encroaching flames. Where they dance is where the sparks of change are born. Earth vows take root in the clearing. I want to close with some passages from a burning testament. And what I will tell you is a young woman, uh, 30, who's a reporter for the New York Times, we had been doing night walks together. She was in Vermont, I was in Utah. Each night we would walk in darkness and then return and write each other a letter and then read that letter as an audio response. It went through a full moon cycle and we were both transformed by it. And we became deeply intimate friends. When she was on assignment, she was sent to Los Angeles where it was burning. The sun looked like a cigarette burn in the fog. You in Australia know these flames and fires well. She called me in the morning and she said, Terry, I can't see, I can't breathe. I don't know where I am. The phrase that came to me was an obituary for the land. Will you write one? If it had been anyone else, I think I would have said no. But when a young person asks a question, yes. And then she said, thank you, I need it in an hour. So I'm sharing with you part of that response. We have been living with a myth. We have constructed a dream. We have cajoled and seduced ourselves into believing we are the center of all things with plants and other sentient beings from ants to lizards to coyotes and grizzly bears remaining subservient to our whims, desires and needs. This is a lethal lie that will be seen by future generations as a grave, a grave moral sin committed and buried in the name of ignorance and arrogance. It is true we have mismanaged our forests and suppressed fire for decades. We have ignored and failed to listen to the wisdom of indigenous peoples and how they have understood and lived with fire for generations. We have overbuilt and overridden the carrying capacity of arid landscapes and underestimated the limits of water in times of drought. We have sacrificed the integrity of fragile and iconic landscapes for the development of oil and gas to fuel the American way of life. This is freedom unmasked. We have a right to live as we wish until we can't. Our reckless history of human habitation is on a collision course with the climate crisis. Climate change is not a hoax. It is real and it is a fire breathing dragon blowing fire at our doors. We cannot breathe. This is our mantra in America now. We cannot breathe because of the smoke. We cannot breathe because of a virus that has entered our homes. We cannot breathe because of police brutality and too many brown bodies and black bodies dead on the streets. We cannot breathe because we are holding our breath for the people and places we love. I was asked to write an obituary for the land, but I realizing, I realize I am writing an obituary for us, for the life we have lost and can never return to. And within this burning of Western lands, our innocence and denial is in flames. The obituary will be short. The time came and these humans died from the old ways of being. Good riddance, it was time. Their cause of death was the terminal disease of solipsism, whereby humans put themselves in the center of the universe. It was only about them. And in so doing, they had been dead to the world that is alive. To the power of these burning, illuminated Western lands that have shaped our character, inspired our souls, and restored our belief in what is beautiful and enduring, 
I will never write your obituary because even as you burn, you are throwing down seeds that will sprout and flower, trees will grow and forests will rise again as living testaments to how one survives change. It is time to grieve and mourn the dead and believe in the power of renewal. If we do not embrace our grief, sadness will come out sideways in unexpected forms of depression and violence. We must dare to find a proper ceremony to collectively honor the dead from the coronavirus as we approach over a million citizens lost, more worldwide. We must honor the lives engulfed in these Western fires, both human and other than human, and the lives we will continue to lose from the climate crisis at hand. Only then can we begin the work of restoration respecting the generations to come as we clear a path toward cooling a warming planet. This will be our joy. Let this be a humble tribute, an exaltation, an homage, and an open-hearted eulogy to all we are losing to fire, to floods, to hurricanes and tornadoes, and the invisible virus that has called us all home and brought us to our knees. We are not the only species that lives and loves on this planet we call home, Earth. May we remember this and raise a fistful of ash to all the lives lost that it holds. Grief is love. How can we hold this grief without holding each other? To bear witness to this moment of undoing is to find strength and spiritual will to meet the dark and smoldering landscapes where we live. We are eroding and evolving at once, together. We can cry. Our tears will fall like rain in the desert and wash off our skins of ash so our pores can breathe, so our bodies can breathe back the lives that we have taken for granted. I will mark my heart with an X made of ash that says the power to restore life resides here. The future of our species will be decided here not by facts, but by love and loss. Hand on my heart, I pledge allegiance to the only home I will ever know. Finding beauty in a broken world is creating beauty in the world we find.